Thanks to Simpson Strong Tie for sponsoring this video. All right, let's talk about load paths. So behind me, you notice that we have rafters framed to the top plates of our wall. Now in high winds, obviously we need to be able to keep the roof system connected to our walls. Unlike this. So this kind of failure is preventable. Uh, this video clip and a few others in this video are provided by the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. Basically, that's what their goal is, to prevent avoidable damage. So look at this giant testing facility so that they can simulate high winds and then we can figure out how to build so that we don't have that much damage. Check them out at disastersafety.org. Let's watch the clip in its entirety. It makes a big impact, doesn't it? Why are the components failing? Where does it fail first? It gives us an appreciation for the magnitude of the forces involved. Uh, oftentimes as framers, we don't really have the background in that to really understand why we're doing what we're doing or why the engineer called out or the code requires, etc. But when we see the force of the winds on the building, in this case, I feel like it helps us to better appreciate what we're doing, why we're doing, and that way you and I can do it better or to the best of our ability because literally there will be generations of people who live in these homes. We want them to be safe. You know what jumps out to me as I watch the video is like good job by the truss manufacturer, <laughs> good job on the roof sheathing, but it's that connection from the roof system to the top plates. That is a critical connection. So typically for a load path, we want it from the top of the roof all the way down to the foundation. In the past, the way that we would accomplish that is with a variety of metal connectors. Maybe like a hurricane clip, an H1, H2.5A, and that would keep the rafter attached to the top plate. But then we might also need to attach the top plate to the stud and the stud to the bottom plate. Anyway, you get the idea. We want that to be a continuous load path so that the force at the top of the wall from the wind gets transferred to the foundation. Now here's how we accomplish that today. Okay, before we continue with the quick stick and the SDWC screws, let me just briefly show you how to use StrongTie's webpage. So first of all, strongtie.com, right? Pretty easy to remember. So this is where you land. You can search for any of your hardware. So let's say H2.5A, that's a hurricane tie. Here it pops up. All we have to do is click on the page. And then from there we can begin to read things. And at the bottom, it will also tell us uh, of any special flyers for that. So let me go back to strongtie.com. Now what I want to show you is how to get to the flyers that I'm about to go over. So when you're on the home page, just go to resources, literature, and then scroll over here to flyers. And now you can search. There's a variety of things that you can do there. Okay, so here's why I get kind of excited about this subject. As I just mentioned, it, it took a fair amount of time to apply the hardware that we needed so that the roof stayed on the house. So notice here on the left hand side, we have like what you're probably familiar with. We have hurricane ties that connect the truss or the rafter to the top plates. We need, uh, you can just Google image search, high wind damage, and you'll see a lot of houses with the roof gone. But it doesn't do any good to just connect to the top plates if the top plates aren't 
adequately connected to the studs, right? And that makes sense to us. As you work your way down toward the foundation, if we have a second or third floor, we need to make sure that those floors are tied together, right? So there might be the tension ties or the floor straps. And then at the very bottom, we need to make sure that our mud sill is anchored or bolted to the concrete. But in addition, we might, might have to attach the bottom of those studs to the plate or to the concrete in some way. Now, if I look at one of these other um, flyers, notice that this one is dealing with uplift. That's what we're talking about. This SDWC screw also works for lateral. Now, in my where I live, mostly we deal with earthquakes, not high winds. So we need to keep the house from sliding off the foundation from one side coming up. You see that? That's called overturning. And then our shear walls prevent racking. So we want our rectangle or square to stay that way, not become a parallelogram or a flat horizontal line, right? We want the building to stay there. Now, notice there in the middle, and this is dealing with earthquakes, we need to make sure that the shear forces that are generated on the roof system, the trusses or rafters, are transferred to the shear walls in the walls below, ultimately to the foundation. Notice right here in the center, we have roof boundary clips. Sometimes if our uh, boundary blocking or bird blocking, as we call them, freeze blocks are vertical, we might use an A35, an A23, etc. Now, let me click over to this other page. Notice this, boundary blocking to top plate connections. That means we can use the quick stick to drive screws up and all of the engineering has been done here. The code tables are provided for your engineer or um, authority having jurisdiction. And instead of adding all the hardware, like you see right here in the middle, the roof boundary clip, you know, each one of those has X number of nails, right? Now we can use these screws directly underneath safely to accomplish the same goal. Okay, let's go back to the video. Because we have the Simpson Strong Tie Quick Stick. This has been designed to attach to an impact driver and drive these fully threaded screws. They're code listed and rated. The tables are, are very easy to follow. It's a six inch and a four and a half, and they're different colors because they're slightly different purposes. So I want to show you how these work. S specifically first for the rafter to top plate, I'm using a six inch fully threaded screw. You just simply drop it in there. A Couple of features to notice is the guides. This allows you, and the bubble level, this allows you to develop the proper angle so that you get the fully developed uh, load rating. It, it's really easy. Once you've done this a few times, you can really get into the rhythm. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so recently somebody on Instagram told me that a drill driver is much faster than the impactor. He was exactly right. Uh, you can go check out my Instagram channel. I'm gonna post the video there. It's at least twice as fast. I'll bet it's closer to three times as fast. So in my opinion, I'm gonna drive all of these from here on out with the drill driver, not the impact driver. So we can't always count on our rafter or truss being directly above the stud for a variety of reasons. So Strong Tie's done all the testing so that for different applications or situations that we might run into, it's okay to use the screw that particular way. You still get the fully developed load rating. I'll show you a couple of them. One of them is just going straight up through the plate. Here I'm driving the screw in nine foot ceilings. You can go up to 10 feet according to the catalog. I've been able to get away with about 11 feet as a short guy, but you get the idea. Most applications, we don't need ladders. What about if the top plates are basically flush with the header? Same thing. Check the catalog for the exact angle, but you can see that's not really an issue here. Now, what about the four and a half inch screw? Take that off. Each of these boxes, by the way, comes with a bit. So the four and a half inch screw in particular I'm gonna show has been uh, designed for your stud to top plate and stud to bottom plate in a toe screw application. So 
So we're going to start the screw about three inches up, plus or minus a quarter. And we want it to essentially angle like that. So start the screw and then rotate it. I'm, I'm aiming right down through that corner. Notice that it did not pop out on that side. So these screws are designed to also go through the inch and a half face of the stud. 22 degrees is the optimal angle. They can be installed between 10 and 30, but I found that just cutting a block and using that to mark the angle was worth the time. You're starting about three inches up, plus or minus a quarter. You kind of start to screw and rotate it and then follow that angle. No splitting. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the top of the wall, but this time I'm gonna use a six inch screw. Previously I used a four and a half because I would have hit concrete. In this case, I used the six inch screw. Go ahead and drive it right up. Now notice that this is on the same face of the stud. So bottom plate, now I'm going stud to top plate. Now, top plates to the rafter. And each of these boxes comes with that handy little guide, which is, is worth using. This was really frustrating for me at first. It took, took some practice, but here's the trick. Notice that I just start the screw, but it's already at a slight angle, and then you can rotate it down. Don't start with it perpendicular to the plate. Use the guides on the quick stick so that you don't blow the screw right out the side. That's why you need that steep angle. So here, notice that you can just look right up the barrel, use that line, and you don't blow out the side. This is just a few of the ways that these screws can be installed. Check the catalog, talk to your local rep, take some of the online webinars through StrongTie. It is worth the time. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for content like this in the future.